Hey guys, it's Duke, and today we'll be looking at the TVP. Now, the TVP is the Czechoslovakian Tier 10 uh, autoloader, which it has been in the game quite a while now. You can tell me, guys, in the comments below, but it's one of the older loader uh, uh, loaders now, and kind of uh, it hasn't seen it hasn't been in the spotlight for a while now since. Nowadays it's all about auto reloaders with a new heavy tanks and now with a campaign reward tank, you know, the Caro da Combattimento 45. So yeah, it kind of has lost the spotlight, but um, during my recent free mark session I had this great game which I wanted to share with you all. And as you can see it's on Westfield and the matchmaker it's um, full tier 10 with free Ardies, which, you know, it's not really the most beautiful experience, but we're still going to have a good go at it. And I wanted to share this uh, uh, replay with you all, not because it's the highest damage, but because the decision making I make here and uh, how I choose to approach uh, the situation and in the end carry a really hard, carry really hard, you know, because it's an insane comeback. So anyways, we're coming to the, uh, what is it, the E6 position, which uh, I find uh, really good, not just because it can snipe... Uh, uh, enemies that are in the K line who are crossing at the beginning, but it can also help uh, the heavy tanks uh, where the STB1 is because if the enemies peak where the STB1 is approximately, you can shoot from behind. And now you'll just see why I love this position so much. The object 140 gets spotted in a really awkward situation uh, position for him, and he takes a full clip, and I'm already at 2K without taking any damage or risking uh, myself. Now. I wouldn't want to actually be spotted because, uh, as you know, the TP is a relatively uh, lightly armored vehicle, and uh, spotting me would mean RT focus basically immediately. <laughs> and, uh, anyways, as as you can see from the oh yeah, number 140 who's crossing, I missed two shots here because I felt that he was actually crossing uh, to the K0, but as, you, as I look at the mini map, he's actually crossing down, which you never see someone do that because it's reckless and obviously I kill him for it. So two bad shots but I still recover in time. So anyways, as I was saying, uh, as you can see from the matchmaker, the Type 5 Heavy is in the game and he's in the city not doing pretty much anything which allows uh, the heavies on our side to actually uh, dominate the northern side, thus the heavy side and thus takes control of the map. And anyways, I see an opportunity to shoot at the Type 5 Heavy, and I'm trying to do it, and I knew, by the way, that there's a chance that Type 68 was going to hit me. But I still uh, hoped the trade would be good, but um, actually, the trade is pretty bad, because I thought I was going to clip the Type fully, but I actually don't. And I only give 600, and it takes like, 750 in return, which is not ideal, to say the least. And what I'm noticing here is that the... Opponents have all rotated in the city and me staying here would be terrible because if I went to my initial position I would be probably proxy spotted eventually by the 430U and the STB and the EBR could cross sniper from the K0 line and uh, Things were looking pretty good actually, but uh, there's only uh, one two one B uh, or what is it? Yeah, but one two one B staying uh, in the K0 holding that position and it won't last really long because he has no cover and uh, Actually, no, it's 1-1, one, one, so honestly, I don't know who's going to win, but uh, I'm pretty sure that 1-2-1-B will die from a crossfire from the mid, like the 430U, the, two, uh, the Type 5, and the 268 eventually. Anyways, I noticed that I was in, uh, is in need of help, so I'm going to try and clip this 430U, punish him as much as possible for taking out our... How's it called? Our LT, which was a really crucial positions, and I gave him three out of four. I don't know if the last one connected. Not gonna lie, I forgot. But uh, punishing him for one thousand is still a good result. Uh, so anyway, map control wise, it's actually pretty equal now. Uh, VBR had to back up because despite it being a broken LT, he still can compete in close quarters with a one to one B which even though it's not the best vehicle, it has pretty good DPM and VBR can't pen him reliably if he doesn't know really what he's doing. <laughs> so anyways, it turns out that the heavy side actually lo loses and the only the STRV is, uh, is the actually the only vehicle remaining there, which is pretty weird because you would never expect an, uh, how's it called? An STRV to be in the A, what is in the B1 position, which is extremely awkward because he is really not a mobile vehicle. 
Anyways, we will create so much more de defensive location and hope the RT will take out the Type 5, which they do. Amazing. Just You just see, like, why you don't play Type 5 anymore in, in 2021. I mean, uh, imagine, like, having 1,500 HP and just taken out, like, in quick succession by three RTs. That's just terrible what the World of Tanks experience. Uh, pretty sure a lot of us can relate to that. So anyways, uh, we crucially took out a 430 unit spot by Type 5, and right now I'm thinking, should I push forward into the city or uh, play it passive? And I choose to play passive, and I choose this because me being spotted would mean uh, me having the same uh, fate as the Type 5, which I would not really look forward to. Anyways, the STRV actually flanks, which is uh, pretty interesting, and spots the RD, but nothing is happening to it. Now, I'm going to, uh, how's it called, uh, speed up the replay a bit, because it gets kind of stale for a while. Anyways, I'm just quickly going to say that 268 gets spotted, but 1 one b manages to put the cross shot, how's it called, but take, gets taken out by the RT. So, we have no crossfires left, actually, and... Uh, uh, I can't help the STRV, the STRV can't help me, and I'm pretty sure it's only a matter of time before the STRV gets spotted and absolutely nuked by the entire team. So anyways, the RT actually shoots the 268 on the blind, we spot the EBR, and I'm gonna focus the EBR, and this is crucial aiming for me. Uh, I know we have to kill the EBR before all of the RTs die, so we hit one, we wait for it, and a click auto aim. Now many of you think that, that would be poor aiming, but the thing is that uh, TVP has excellent uh how's it called the shell velocity and when the ebr turns for a split second he is a linear target for me and so i shoot at him and uh, it, it will gonna work 100 percent but you have to time it perfectly so anyways that was crucial we're at 6k damage and 2k spotting and uh it's 11 12 now and it's just me and the artilleries versus a 277 and a 268 which is still pretty healthy so anyways, uh, I'm gonna stay here and as I was mentioning before, RT surviving was crucial, not because of uh, their, their, their firepower or damage potential, but because they're good spotters. Because if, for example, the 277 relocates completely, he doesn't though, if he relocates completely on the zero line, they will spot him and I can crossfire them. So right now, like, there's no chances of me pushing, it's just hoping for the best. And what I'm gonna do is push the 277. But look at this, what, what are the chances that 268 is camping there? And I... That was unbelievable. But anyways, talking about uh, RT is saving my butt. <laughs> I mean, uh, the 268 uh, focuses the RD because he didn't see me coming and or he didn't expect me to move. And I, I use it to my advantage. So anyways, we take out the 268, which is great. The 261 actually shoots me. I don't know if I was spotted or something. I have no idea, but that was a pretty good blind fire if it was. And we know that the RD now is in the zero line. So my priority right now is actually killing the 277, and I have 1000 HP, so I can neatly take out the 277. The question is actually, uh, I'm more worried about the RTs than the 277, because I can clip the guy, but like, the RTs, while I clip him, have enough time to load. Uh, well, they're actually going to be already loaded, but they have enough time to aim and do significant damage to me. Especially the GW, which is really uh, precise and has relatively good damage if uh, hits fully. So anyways, uh, we push on, the 277 is spotted, I do a uh, bad shot there, the 277 bounces, but we, it all finishes pretty good, not gonna lie, I was kind of had some nervous fingers right there. But uh, it all pays out, we know that VRT is at, uh, what is it, at G0, and uh, the second splash from VRT came, I didn't know exactly at the time where it was. Uh, I thought the RT was uh, not gonna lie in, he's, I thought the GW is gonna relocate eventually to C1 or something like that. But anyways, I'm going to speed up the replay here and hopefully the 261 has relocated because the 261 is actually a really fast uh, tier 10 uh, RT, artillery tank. So I'm really hoping I don't have to chase all that time because it's three minutes and a half and I wouldn't like to finish this battle in, uh, in a cap, not gonna lie. Anyways, I spot the 261, that is a great result there. Totaling our damage up to 7.7k. And I'm going to speed the replay up because I don't think any one of you guys want to watch me uh, drive all around the map. <laughs> Anyways, VRT uh, is being, uh, as you can in the chat, I'm talking with RG where he should move. Uh, just to cover a little bit more ground spotting area. And since uh, I spot nothing here, 
and the art is also moving up i'm just gonna think that uh, the art is in k2 and if not then he's probably gonna be like towards k5 k6 because that vehicle is really slow the gw so anyways i'm going and as we can see the gw is spotted and we finish this epic battle epic carry with artillery help getting a total of 8.5k damage and 2k assist which is fantastic so anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this one and uh, i'll see you in the next one take care